Silent Hex was created by Chunder Fins, a one-man company who is a cartoonist, animator, computer programmer, and a longtime arcade fan as he envisioned this game as a love letter to old school arcade shows. Major kudos to this man. The fact that he was able to create this game with no help at all deserves major praise. And on October the 1st of 2022, the game finally releases on both Steam and Nintendo Switch. Like with all the indie titles, I'll be looking at the Switch version. However, it doesn't really matter which one you get since both versions are the exact same. So without further ado, let's hop right into the story. Firstly, I love how the beginning is a reference to the Scott Pilgrim video game. At the start of the game, there's a prompt that says winners don't eat meat. But in Hazelnut Hex, it referenced this by saying winners don't skip breakfast. A very clever detail to point out. The setting takes place in a fantasy-like universe where things went left as breakfast start disappearing everywhere. But fear not as the creator of the number one breakfast cereal in the world is here to save breakfast. And her name is Nat, a cute witch behind her trademark cereal, which is Hazelnut Hex. And she'll need to use it in order to bring her friends back to her senses. But despite not being affected by the curse and having to be a bat lady, hearing Vivian not care about breakfast is just outrageous. But seeing Nock knocking her down after having her cereal disrespected is hilariously petty. Anyway, she was able to save her final friend Sabine, but just when the soft-spoken Grim Reaper was about to answer Nat's questions, she ended up getting shot from behind by Nat's arch rival, Lamona. Turns out it was her who made the curse, because her cereal, Cauliflower Curse, wasn't doing so much in sales due to the success of Nat's Hazelnut Hex, and the fact that she's the first witch mascot for a cereal brand, so she retaliated by stealing all of the breakfast from around the world. Okay, this is just level 5 pettiness first of all, and second of all, cauliflower curse? Like, who the fuck is buying a box of vegetable flavored cereal? That shit's disgusting. No wonder retailers ain't putting that in the stock. So the game ends with the final fight between Nat and Lamona, and right when the petty witch bitch was ready to launch her ultimate attack, she ended up getting backshotted into the lava by Sabine, effectively killing her and is now a ghost. Breakfast is saved once and for all, but at the cost of Nat's cereal being number one, as Lamona took that spot thanks to her new ghost form. Of course, it's the ghost titties that ends up bringing in sales. Wait, what? No, that can't be right. There's gotta be some kind of mistake. Wait, come back. Despite the story being very short and simple, I can appreciate the effort being put into it. In my Cat Girl Without Salad review, I criticized the story direction and how the dialogue shouldn't be smack dab in the middle of combat. Hazelnut Hex doesn't have that issue. Cutscenes are placed before and after boss fights, which keeps the story very sweet and concise, and are portrayed in character portraits and text boxes. My only nitpick is that there's no voice acting, but for a game that lasts for like less than an hour, I think it works really well without it. The only character that is voiced is Nat, and she's voiced by Stephanie Kamor, who's also the voice of Patricia Wagon from the Mighty Switch 4 series. So I understand not including voice acting in the game, as it would cost a certain amount of money. And for a game that's done by one guy, I think he made the right decision here. Now putting that aside, time to cover the gameplay. Like Kaka without Sally, this game is a suit em up, or as some like to call it, a cute em up, which instead of having aliens and other sci-fi or crazy elements, this time we're introduced with a cutesy background with cute characters and enemies. Well, for the most part. As the cutesy witch, you'll have to shoot your way through 5 action packed stages. You tap or hold down the shoot button for rapid fire, which is the A button on the switch, and as you collect hazelnuts, you'll increase your firepower. You can also release the shoot button to charge up for a charge shot, which can hit multiple enemies for extra points and stars. Stars will fill your super beam meter, so the more you collect, the more super beams you can pull off by pressing the bomb button, which is the B button on the switch. Should you save your swirly friend Sam, you'll even have more firepower. And trust me when I say that you'll need a lot of firepower to get through this game. If you thought Kako without Salad was hectic, Hazelnut Hex turns it up to an 11. No matter which stage you're on, you are going to experience bullet hell. Bullets, bombs, etc. is all over the place, and you'll need to dodge or shoot them all in order to progress through. So be careful not to get hit in Nat's weak spot, which is her Hazelnut charm around her neck. And as you can tell by the footage I'm showing you, I actually suck ass at this game. I mean, look at the amount of continues I've gotten in one run. However, unlike Pac-Girl without Salad, I never got annoyed or pissed at all for two reasons. 
One, once you lose all your hearts, you'll continue where you left off, but at the cost of your score. But at the very least, I don't have to worry about starting all over again on the stage, which is really good. And two, the enemies don't really annoy me that much. In fact, I actually don't mind the enemies in this game. Not once did they get me mad or hella pissed, but I counted on two occasions where some enemies, believe it or not, actually had me blushing a little. Hazelnut Hex is rated T14, and it does have a bit of partial nudity in the game. Not from the main and supporting characters, mind you, but a few of the enemies, like a butt naked lady in a flying clam, beautiful mermaids, or sexy demon girls with two piece swimsuits. Hey, I didn't make this game, blame the, blame the creator, okay? I know this game doesn't focus much on fan service, but I enjoy the small drops of it. Anyway, before you start your adventure, you'll need to choose which shooting type you want to go with. Type A has the balance of speed and firepower. Type B has the most speed but is less powerful, and Type C has less speed but is more powerful. Personally, I go for either Type A or Type C, but that's just me though. Of course, at the end of each stage, you'll need to fight against Nat's friends in order to bring them back to the senses. And let me tell you, this game gets harder as you progress through it. However, with a bit of practice, I'm sure you'll be able to get through the bullet hell. But I know there are some people who play this game that are actual gods of shmups. If you know what you're doing, you can beat this game in less than 30 minutes without any continues. But if this is your first time playing this game, I say about less than 45 minutes. And despite having 5 stages with 6 boss fights, Hazelnut Hex would take you even less time to beat than Cat Girl Without Salad. And that's mainly because each stage takes less than 5 to 6 minutes for you to beat. Now that may sound disappointing, but I can assure you that this has way more replayability and action. However, if we're talking about replayability, it should be noted that this game has a rocking ass soundtrack, and goddamn do I love it a lot. Hazelnut Hex soundtrack is so damn energetic and awesome to listen to. Tracks like Lightly Frosted and Theme of Hazelnut Hex are really, really good, and I enjoy the end credits theme, but my favorite track out of this OST is Bite After Dark. It's so amazing to listen to. And yes, the soundtrack is also made by Chunder fans, and damn did he did a good job at it. From the percussion to the rocking guitar to the archaic vibes, this is a top-notch soundtrack that I highly recommend. Should you feel the need to download the soundtrack, the link to it will be in the description below. Or you can check out the official Chunder fans YouTube channel to listen to the whole soundtrack. Link to the channel will also be in the description below. Graphically, this game looks gorgeous for an indie title. It's got a smooth 60 frames per second, assuming you're playing this on, the, on Steam. The backgrounds on each stage looks really amazing. The enemy designs look pretty good, but the true winners are Nat and her friends. I love how unique each supporting character looks. The snake hair that Jules is rocking really gives Medusa vibes. Vivian's more of a night person, so of course she's rocking PJs for Succubus. And I love how much of a shy cutie Sabine is. She's really adorable. Plus, I do like the hairstyle that Mona's rocking. And of course, we have our female pro tag, Nat. I am digging the fit she's rocking, and the purple hair can really get me going. She's mostly cute with a small drop of sexiness added to it. So yeah, I think the character designs are really good, and I love the backgrounds for each stage. I also love how fast-paced the game is. Like, just wow. I still cannot get over the fact that this game was created by one guy. Which is insane. And the fact that he worked on this game for almost 5 years definitely showed the dedication he had for this game. Hazelnut Hex does have some replay value. So if you're looking to get the highest score in this game, then go nuts. Even though this game lasts for less than 40 minutes, I still had a lot of fun with it. From the simple gameplay to the obnoxious bullet hell, to the cutesy character designs, and the bitchin' soundtrack, this game is chaotically fun. Hazelnut Hex, for me, gets a 9 out of 10. The game is on Steam and Nintendo Switch, so if you're into shoot 'em ups, you might find some enjoyment in Hazelnut Hex. I consider this game to be worth the $8 price tag, but you better be prepared for the most intense bullet hell you'll have to go through. But that's just what makes it fun. Thunderfins, a job well done. And I recommend you follow him on Twitter because he's an amazing artist. Link to that as well as his YouTube channel will be in the description below if you're interested in checking out his music as well. This will be my final video game review for 2024, as I want to enjoy the rest of 2024 as much as I can. But if you're interested, you can check out my playlist of all the reviews I've done before this one. And you can bet that my next review, and you can bet that my next review will be Fortnite related since a certain K-pop group will be coming in two months. So the next time we meet for a review, 
It'll be on Fortnite's game modes, and it's my personal favorite. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Starting in late January, I'll be reviewing Fortnite Festival. Until then, this is Starter Protagonist signing out. As always, Goki Genyo, and have a startastic day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.